Hello students. So student, how are you? I hope you are studying very well. So students, today we start our chapter, chapter number 4, What Books and Burials Tell Us, Class 6. Students, today we are going to the library for the first time. The library was much bigger than your classroom. Here we see many books related to different culture, literature, religion and many more books. So students, our chapter is related to books, ancient books and we also discuss in this chapter about burials. So students, let's start our chapter. One of the oldest books in the world. You may have heard about the Vedas. There are four of them. The Rig Veda, Sam Veda, Yajur Veda and Atharva Veda. The oldest Veda is the Rig Veda. Composed about 3500 years ago. The Rig Veda includes more than a thousand hymns called Sukta or well said. These hymns are in praise of various gods and goddesses. Three gods are especially important. Agni, the god of fire, Indra, a warrior god, and Soma, a plant from which a special drink was prepared. These hymns were composed by sages. Priests taught students to recite and memorize each syllable word and sentences bit by bit with great care most of the hymns were composed taught and learnt by men a few were composed by women the rig veda is an old or vedic sanskrit which is different from the sanskrit you learnt in school these days the books we use are written and printed the Rig Veda was recited and heard rather than read. It was written down several centuries after it was first composed and printed less than 200 years ago. So student, how historians study the Rig Veda? Historians like archaeologists find out about the past but in addition to material remains they examine written sources as well. Here in this picture, we see a page from a manuscript of the Rig Veda. This manuscript of the Rig Veda on birch bark was found in Kashmir about 150 years ago. It was used to prepare one of the earliest printed texts of the Rig Veda as well as an English translation. It is now preserved in a library in Pune, Maharashtra. Next subtopic is cattle, horses and chariots. There are many prayers in the Rig Veda for cattle, children, especially sons and horses. Horses were yoked to chariots that were used in battles which were fought to capture cattle. Battles were also fought for land which was important for pasture and for growing hardy crops that ripened quickly, such as barley. Some battles were fought for water and to capture people. Some of the wealth that was obtained was kept by the leaders, some was given to the priests and rest was distributed among us the people. Some wealth was used for the performance of yajna or sacrifices in which offering were made into the fire. These were made for gods and goddesses. Offering could include ghee, grain and in some cases animals. Most men took part in these wars. There was no regular army but there were assemblies where people met and discussed matters of war and peace. They also choose leaders who were often brave 
and skillful warriors students you know which word describe people the word used to describe people found in the rigveda there are two groups who are described in term of their work the priests sometime called brahmins who performed various rituals and the rajas these rajas were not like the ones you will be learning about later they did not have capital cities palaces or armies nor did they collect taxes generally son did not automatically succeed fathers as rajas two words were used to describe the people or the community as a whole one was the word jana which we still use in hindi and the other languages the other was vish the word vashya comes from vish several vish or jana are mentioned by name some we find references to the purujana or vish the bharata jana or vish the yadu jana or vish and so on sometimes the people who compose the hymns describe themselves as aryas and called their opponents dasas or dasyus these were people who did not perform sacrifices and probably spoke different languages later the term dasa and the feminine dasi came to mean slave slaves were women and men who were often captured in war they were treated as the property of their owners who could make them do whatever work they wanted while the rigveda was being composed in northwest of the subcontinent students here we discuss the story of megalith you see in this picture these stone boulders are known as megaliths literally big stones these were carefully arranged by people and were used to mark burial sites The practice of erecting megaliths began about 3000 years ago and was prevalent throughout the Deccan South India in the North East and Kashmir this type of megalith is known as a cist some cists like the one shown here have portholes which could be used as an entrance Some important megalith sites are shown on map too. While some megaliths can be seen on the surface, other megalithic burial were often underground. Sometimes archaeologists find a circle of stone boulders or a single large stone standing on the ground. These are the only indications that there are burial beneath. All these have some common features generally the dead were buried with distinctive pots which are called black and red ware also found are tools and weapons of iron and sometimes skeletons of horses horse equipments and ornaments of stone and gold in this picture iron equipment found from megalithic burials left top horse equipment left below axis below a dagger students now we find out about social differences archaeologists think that objects found with a skeleton probably belonged to a dead person sometime more objects are found in one grave than in another find brahmagiri on map 2 here one skeleton was buried with 33 gold beads two stone beads four copper bangles and one conch shell other skeletons have only a few pots these finds suggest that there was some difference in status amongst the people who were buried some were rich others poor some chiefs other followers were some burial spot meant for certain families sometimes megalith contain more than one skeleton these indicate that people perhaps belonging to the same family were buried in the same place 
though not at the same time. The bodies of those who died later were brought into the grave through the potholes. Stone circles or boulders placed on the surface probably served as signposts to find the burial site so that people could return to the same place whenever they wanted to. Student, here we discuss a special burial at Inamgao. Find Inamgao on map 2. It is a site on the river Gode, a tributary of the Bhima. It was occupied between 3600 and 2700 years ago. Here adults were generally buried in the ground, laid out straight with the head toward the north. Sometimes burials were within the houses. Vessels that probably contained food and water were placed with the dead. One man was found buried in a large four-legged clay jar in the courtyard of five-roomed house, one of the largest houses at the site in the center of the settlement. This house also had a granary. The body was placed in a cross-legged position. Student, here we discuss what skeleton studies tell us. It is easy to make out the skeleton of a child from its small size. However, there are no major differences in the bones of a girl and a boy. Sometimes people decide on the basis of what is found with the skeleton. For instance, if a skeleton is found with jewelry, it is sometimes thought to be that of a woman. However, there are problems with this. Often men also wore ornaments. A better way of figuring out the sex of a skeleton is to look at the bone structure. The hip or the pelvic area of a woman is generally large to enable childbearing. These distinctions are based on modern skeletal studies. About 2000 years ago, there was a famous physician named Charka who wrote a book on medicine known as the Charak Samhita. There he states that the human body has 360 bones. This is a much larger number than the 200 bones that are recognized in modern anatomy. Charka arrived at this figure by counting the teeth, joints and cartilage. So students, here we discuss occupation at Inamgao. Archaeologists have found seeds of wheat, barley, rice, pulses, millets, peas and sea same. Bones of a number of animals, many bearing cut marks that show they may have been used as food, have also been found. These include cattle, buffalo, goat, sheep, dog, horse, ass, pig, sambar, spotted deer, black buck, antelope, hare, and mongoose, besides birds, crocodile, turtle, crab, and fish. There is evidence that fruits such as bear, amla, jamun, dates and a variety of berries were collected. So students, in this chapter we know about one of the oldest book that is the Rig Veda. With the help of Rig Veda, we know about the society and culture of that time. It tells us about battles fought for land and cattle. We also know about megaliths and special burials at Inamgaon. So student, now we will start our question answer time. So student, match the column. Column A, Sukta, Chariots, Yajna, Dasa, Megalith. Column B, Stone Boulder, Sacrifice, Well Said, Used in Battles, Slaves. So students, match Sukta, well said. Chariots used in battles. Yajna sacrifice. Dasa slave. Megalith stone boulder. Student now true false time. First, the river god is a tributary of the Bhima. True. Second, the oldest Veda is the Sam Veda. False. Third, slaves were women and men. 
who were often captured in war true fourth hymns were composed by sages true fill in the blanks first the rigveda has been written in dash second dash is situated on the river god third the rigveda was composed about dash years ago fourth dash is a part of a family of languages known as indo-european fifth the major gods praised in the hymns of the rigveda were dash dash and dash next the dead were buried with distinctive pots which are called dash and dash were so answer first sanskrit second inamgaon third 3500 fourth sanskrit fifth agni indra and soma sixth black and red so students now we start our mcq so students ready which of the following is the oldest veda options are samveda yajurveda rigveda atharvaveda answer is rigveda next who is the god of fire according to rigveda options are agni indra soma answer is agni next question in which language is the rigveda written options are vedic sanskrit vedic hindi vedic tamil answer is vedic sanskrit when was the rigveda written options are about 3500 year ago about 1000 year ago about 500 year ago answer is about 3500 year ago on which bark was the rigveda written options are neem bark second is tulsi bark third is birch bark right answer is birch bark where is birch bark found in maharashtra pune delhi kashmir right answer is kashmir next question who were the priests in the ancient time options brahmins six muslims right answer is brahmins which were the two words used to describe the people or the community as a whole options are jana and vish aryas and dasa right answer is jana and vish in which region was the rigveda composed option northeast northwest southwest answer is northwest so students i hope you understand the chapter and you understand rigveda and our burials so student stay safe stay healthy thank you